Let's get over to our man, Mr. Steve Rose, as we do each and every Monday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Steve has an outstanding newsletter, Mastering Probability. It's very easy to get. Come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to go into newsletters. You're going to see it right on the right-hand side. You can get Mastering Probability for one month for $149. You get it for six months for $6.95, which is a savings of $199 at 22%. And you get it for one full year, folks, for $11.95, which is a savings of $593 at 33%. They all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, folks. So you can get the newsletter. Steve has a huge amount of archives. He has a huge amount of tools that you get to take a look at. You can use, understand, great value. Steve Rhodes, what's going on? Well, you know, you were talking about the the markets, obviously, and one of the things that you and I, we don't overlook, but, we, but it's not necessarily our primary focus, is the Russell 2000. So I just, as you were going through the charts in the summertime, I, I was put, I put the charts for the IWM up on my screen, cool. which we're showing right now. And the interesting thing, so you, you mentioned a couple of the different tools and the patterns that I teach subscribers. Uh, one of those patterns is the uh, TD9 count pattern. And in the case of the IWM, we take a look at the ETF. It actually formed, it confirmed that pattern on the trading day of July 20th. Now, what that, that did was that established a resistance zone, uh, which is the high from July 19th. And that's out at the 196.94 level. Now, we're trading above that right now. And it appears that we're going to negate that pattern, as well as a couple of days ago on Thursday, there's another pattern that I teach called the Rhodes, Moment Rhodes Momentum Pattern. Uh, it helps us to identify tops and bottoms. And in this case here, the IWM formed that pattern, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator pattern, on uh, July 27th, uh, last Thursday. Now, price is trading above both of those highs. Now, even though, uh, folks, uh, price, uh, even though it generated those topping signals, what price never did in the IWM was break support. And here, in the case of support, Tom, we're not even talking about the lowest level because one of those tools that I use for support are those TAS market profiles, prices above the top of the profile. Yes. We tested it on that day on last Thursday when that we had that big swoosh to the downside. All price did was test the top of that profile. So the overall signal for the last few days is because price never broke through support was more of a neutral type signal. But that's not what we have today. If we get a close above, and I use this high here from Thursday, if we get a close above 197.63, this says that that pattern gets negated and it should continue to move higher, the IWM. When I look at the weekly chart out here, I've got a weekly A to B equals CD pattern that could take us up into the 201 area on a monthly basis. Prices above another tool that I teach is the oscillator and change line. Prices trading above a green oscillator and change line here on a monthly basis. We're going to get a close above the top of its profile. The charts for the IWM, Tom, uh, no matter how I look at them, they're bullish, especially cool. today with yeah. uh, with price taking out uh, that uh, prior set of tops that I've and got. And that's so a I long it, base, man. I mean, if it can take that base out, that's a long. I get the weekly up right now myself, and that's if it can take right. that out, that's a long base. Yeah, there, there's there's no doubt when you really widen that chart out, you can see that consolidation. You're like, man, right? And that's what you know. That's in the face of rising interest rates, right? Which yeah. should impact the the small caps more than, you know, impacts everybody. But certainly the small caps, you would think, would be the biggest. Um, oh, yeah. Would have well, the most it can be impact, indicating right? that we're getting close to the end, too. That, it it yeah, doesn't yeah, have absolutely. to be a pullback, but, you know, in the, in the interest yeah. rates, but could, you know, indicate that we're getting close to the end. So Absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, oftentimes you and I, we discuss the seasonal cycle patterns for the indices. As you know, I've got this uh, tool uh, provided by the folks over at Seasonex. So it allows us to take a look at the seasonal cycles. And what I've got up on my screen right now is the uh, NASDAQ 100. And I'm just looking at the last 10 years. So when we take a look at the last decade, the NDX 100 on average has topped out around August 13th. So two weeks from today. So we're still in the favorable seasonal cycle. We're at the end of the month. You talked about window dressing. And this rally, on average, is suggesting to, at least based on this seasonal time frame, that uh, we could rally for another couple of weeks out there. So something for everybody to take into consideration. Uh, this is the seasonal pattern for the NDX 100 over the last 25 years. So we take a look at the last 25 years. It says something different. It says that we should have formed a top. Um, a little while ago, and the NDX 100 um, uh, actually formed a Rhodes Momentum Indicator top similar to what we were looking at in the IWM on July 20th. That is still in effect, and it won't get negated until we see it close about 15, 930, So which pattern is it? Is it the one for 25 years that showed the top? Um, you know, uh, a few weeks ago, or is it the one that uh, is on a 10-year program? And I don't know the answer to that, 
But if we take a look at the uh, daily and weekly charts for the NDX 100 and the NQ, what people will see here is both the daily and the weekly charts for both of these instruments. So in the case of the NQ on a daily basis and the NDX 100, we see that Rhodes momentum indicator top. And it's shown by these black diagonal lines, Tom, that automatically get drawn when it, drawn when it meets the conditions that I'm looking for. And that way you don't have to do, I don't have to do any work. I just have to be aware of the pattern. Just by getting a pattern, though, doesn't mean that's a top or a bottom. The way that my patterns confirm themselves is the market speaks to us in bullish or bearish reversal candles. And it's at those tops or bottoms where I'm really taking a look at that specific uh, uh, type of candle formation. So we have a Rhodes momentum indicator top on the daily for the NQ. On the weekly, we've got a TD9 count and Rhodes momentum indicator top. In the NASDAQ 100, we've got a, on a daily basis a Rhodes momentum indicator top. And on the weekly, the same thing, we have a TD9 count top. Now, here, price is not busted through support. So the NQ is basically held profile support, and not until that gets taken out would we see a market moving lower. So that's uh, just something to consider here. So even though you and I, we talk about the uh, seasonal pattern, what I thought I would do with the last couple of minutes here is instead of doing, instead of focusing our time there, is dive down and take a look at stock performance over the next 60 days. So it's another cool tool that the, um, uh, that the folks over at Seasonex provide. And what we're looking at right now are the uh, top 20 performing stocks over the last 20 years for the next two months out there. Okay. And so I've got the top 20 that are listed here. So uh, SGEN, uh, Seattle Genetics, shows up as the number one uh, top rated stock. This happens to be the top 20 stocks that underperform the market. So in this case here, and again, during the same time frame, we'll take a look at the last 20 years and then what to expect during the next two months out here. Baker Hughes, at Sirius XM, Applied Materials, they've had the... Uh, they, they have underperformed the market, meaning, meaning they've moved lower. So we go back to the number one performing stock within the index 100, uh, Seattle Genetics out here. And the cool thing is you can see the time frame that we're talking about. So it averages the last 20 years over this uh, time period out here. And 16 out of 20 years, this has been profitable. Now, when I take a look at the weekly chart for SGEN, it shows a sideways consolidation with price testing the bottom of its pattern. I've got an A to B equals CD down on the daily time frame, folks. So what I would be waiting for here, if somebody wanted to play some type of options trade or some, some other type of trade out there, I would wait for a bullish reversal candle on the daily time frame before I would enter that trade. The second performing stock with inside the NDX 100, NVIDIA. Uh, you can see, again, the time frame out here uh, for the next two months, what to anticipate or expect. When I look at the weekly chart for NVIDIA, it shows a failed TD9 count top. And that suggests we should see higher price and increase the odds of a further rally. The daily chart just simply shows a consolidation within its profile. So if price can close above the top of that profile at 474.86, uh, it should be off to the races to the upside. So lots of cool tools out there and uh, glad to share them with you. That's a beautiful thing, Steve. And listen, folks, it's very easy to get Steve's newsletter. Come over to our website at TFNN. You go into newsletters. You're going to see it right on the right-hand side, Mastering Probability. Steve, you have a great one, safe one. We look forward to the show tomorrow. Thanks, Tom. Take Thank care. Thank you. Stay right there, folks. You come right back. We have the Dow up 10. NASDAQ off 1.5. S&P's down 3.5. We'll come right back.